I'm here with artist Neelay Patel, and Neelay always brings great, colorful, exquisite ideas to us, and today is no different. I'm excited. Thank you. We're doing some exotic travels today, and I wanted to show you how to make a fun pair of peacock earrings that I think represent peacock earrings. And um, we're going to be using some beading wire and some knitted wire to make them. Okay, well, let's take a look at the earrings. These are gorgeous. Thank you. I love co uh, combining the different colors of beading wire, and then I think the knitted wire adds a cool dimensional touch um, something that's just a little different in mixed media uh, yeah. to the earring design. And it adds some sparkle. Who doesn't love sparkle? We all do. I know. Raise our hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do we get started? Fabulous. So well, I'm just using some craft wire. So that's the first thing that you're going to need. I cut about five inches of it, and this is 22 gauge. So it's just small enough to fit through the knitted wire, but yet substantial enough to work um, for wire wrapping. So what you're going to do is I just chose a decorative bead. This happens to be round, and you just basically string that on. You then take your knitted wire. This has a ball chain inside of the knitted um, tube, tube right. that's on it. Right, correct. And the lighter blue color is what I'm using as well. But you kind of want to choose an area that's between the two different um, balls of the ball chain. And you could basically string that right through with the craft wire. Okay. And it doesn't fray. Um, and so you can kind of, and I didn't get a good grasp on it, but let's see. It takes some finesse, I think, it to does. get it through. Yeah, absolutely. But that is such a cool way to work um, in a different direction on that, yes. on the um, knitted wire. Yeah, you can literally do anything with it, I think. Um, big imagination, you know? So once you've wrapped it around once, you just kind of want to go all the way around. I slid my bead down to the other end of the wire, and I'm just going to go ahead and poke it through the knitted cord again and making sure that it does go through. Sometimes you have to wiggle with your fingernail and, um, well, really your finger just to be able to get it through. But you kind of just go back and forth, teeter-tottering on that little craft wire until you get a couple loops down. But it's super easy. And this again, this wire is thin enough to allow for that to wrap pretty easily and go through it pretty easily. So I'm nice. just gonna go ahead and complete my wrap here. Well, and the components that you chose really do resemble a peacock feather. It has that kind of big um, eye. Almost eye in, in the, the middle, middle of the yeah. feather, yeah, totally. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my last loop here. And you can see I got a pretty good body of component here, <laughs> just with yeah. a few different wraps. Yeah, that looks great. Thank you. All right, so check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it with some cutters. And just simply, I usually do about two of the ball links there out. Okay. Whenever I cut it. Um, that way I can make sure that the knitted wire doesn't come apart or anything like that. Here's, before I get to the next step, but you could kind of see if I use a round bead, I get a round knitted wire component. And if I use stacked beads, I get an oval shaped one. Nice. So that's something to consider whenever you're making this technique, if you're really trying to get some unique variety. But now you could just simply make a simple loop. So now I'll grab my round nose pliers and we'll go ahead and make our simple loop here at one end. You simply just grasp it there at the top of your, uh, your round nose pliers and then basically just work your way around is what I like to do. I like to make this really cool, easy P shape that it has, and then what I do is I break the neck. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you grasp it with your chain nose pliers at the base of where your loop started and just kind of push back a little bit. Perfect. Yeah, and so you'll do that to both sides. So let me go ahead and trim this. I usually trim about um, a half inch, cut it off, grab your round nose pliers, grasp it into making sure that there's no wire sticking out up there, and you go ahead and work that around. If there's a little bit sticking out, it's not a problem. We can go ahead and cut to the length that it is sticking out on the P-shaped loop, just like that. And you'll simply complete your loop once again before breaking the neck. So violent. It is. It's as turbulent as my shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is such an easy way to do simple loops, though. Absolutely. It, it's really streamlined and definitely easy. So we have our component built in no time. And now what we want to do is go ahead and create our little feather shape with beading wire. I've went ahead and cut three strands. No, here we go. F ah, three strands. I thought it was four. 
um, of beading wire, and this is roughly about five and a half to six inches. Okay. Just the bigger you go with the beading, or the you know, longer you go with beading wire, the bigger the feather will look. And you just want to feed that through your simple loop here at the top, all three of them at once. Okay. And then you basically can feed all six strands. <laughs> this is a crazy part. You want to go through a three millimeter crimp. This is the largest crimp. Okay. Ever. For and you can. Making. You could use multiple colors if you wanted to combine yes, different. Yes. Absolutely. So it just really fits in there pretty, pretty easily. So now um, I'm gonna match it to this earring that I've already created. So I'm gonna slide down my crimp and making sure that it is the same as the other earring. I'll feed it into my crimpers, into the very last loop that looks like a V shape. Uh, not loop, excuse me, the... Uh, the notch. The notch, thank you. Go ahead and give myself a good crimp. That way I've got this cool moon shape um, that's happened with the crimp once I've pressed it. And then these particular crimpers make three different sizes. Um, and so I'm gonna put it in the last one because that's the largest. Okay. So simply turn on its side and press, and that is basically it. If you feel that you've not pressed it enough, you could certainly take it to the chain nose top and go ahead and continue pressing it, just like that. Very good. You can then just cut off all of those extra little pieces of wire with ease, and you've established your feather um, shape in no time. So I've got this little loop here at the bottom and I've just made a simple loop on a little bubble. And you can go ahead and attach that to complete your earring uh, design here. And then we can attach our findings so that we can wear it out. Nice. I don't have my ears pierced yet, but maybe, maybe someday. someday. Yeah. Well, um, I think the fun thing let's... about earrings is it gives you a chance to experiment with a lot of different techniques. Yes. You know, and you could make these in an evening and wear them to work the next day. Absolutely, and what a great way to decompress after a long day of work <laughs> and come home to an easy, fun technique. Right. Um, so there we go, that's, that's the earring in a nutshell. And something extra that I did was I put a crimp cover at the bottom just to maybe give it an extra finish, an extra Dress polish. It up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but you don't have to. It's just if you're in that comfort. Oh, can you show us how to put it on? Yeah, on absolutely. Okay. Kind of in the same way as you would do a crimp. What I do is I just slide that little crimp cover right over the crimp. Oops. And sometimes it's a little bit close, so you have to go back and open it with a pair of pliers. In this case, I'm gonna see if I can wing it. And I'm gonna put it back into the crimp, the crimpers. Kind of just press it on as it did there. It just kind of fit right in. And then I'm just gonna use the last notch, which is the largest, to go ahead and press it. You wanna be very light with it and just work work it around yes. to get that nice round shape. If you go too quickly, you could press it into the wrong direction and then you'll start to get a warped crimp. Yeah, it kind of goes out of shape. Exactly. That looks great. But there you go. Very nice. Thank you. So perhaps these even have a Southwestern feel to them because they're that sort of, um, I don't know, the Southwest colors of turquoise and the, the coppers. Yeah. But again, turning it back to, if we're exotic traveling and going for a peacock, then I think mixing up the wire colors is gonna be the best way to go. That's a good idea. Let's take a look at your pendant over there. Yeah, I uh, utilize the same technique to match my earrings with a really fun pendant. And I use the um, knitted wire cord to just hang the pendant off of. So it kind of goes and ties back into the actual component, the central component that's in the earring. Okay. Let's take a look at the back of your necklace, too. If you can spin your... There we go. There we we'll go. just take a look. Yeah. People I are use... always curious how to finish, and these are special findings, right? These are very special findings. They're custom-made, and so um, it's basically a crimp with teeth inside of it. So you don't need any glue, and you don't need any special tools. You just simply slide it right on top of the uh, knitted wire, and you just crimp it, and you attach your clasp, and you're ready to go. It's a beautiful finish. Well, let's take Thank a look you. at the gold necklace. Now that you've learned these techniques, yes. that you can take it way, way Absolutely. Up. So in this design, I um, just basically use the same component uh, technique that is that we first did, with just putting on the wire, and then the knitted wire, and going around and around. Oh, okay. And I've made several components and then just basically attached them together with wire wrap loops. Nice. So that made for a really fun design. And then the design next to it, I actually incorporated the um, 
the beading wire, a colored beading wire, and made a giant ring over the giant ring. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> and I love the way you used the um, knitted wire as a necklace chain. Yes, um, it just, again, ties back to the central component and it's substantial enough to work as a chain, but yet be delicate enough to work as a woven design as part of the weaving process or yeah. wiring process. So it's a really fun chain, I think, to work with. The colors are just absolutely gorgeous. And if you're looking for a nice professional finish for jewelry, then I might suggest giving it a try. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Neela. It was great having you here today. I'm so glad I could teach you this technique Yay. and our friends out there. So thank you for having me.